right, so we're just gonna have a little fun, right? I work, I work. I work, I work. I'm not fucking with it. I'm never gonna believe it. I walked the streets of South Central, seen Fallujah bleeding in it, watched the news and seen it printed. The lies have been prescripted. All the ghettos look the same as well as all the people in it. See, this struggle is a hustle thing. The government's magic muggling, casting conception while you're struggling in all the lies that y'all constructing when your freedom is at stake and the revolution starts to bubble in. Our history books are rewrote like Don King was meant to. We interrupt this. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a message from Black Lives. Hashtag Black Lives. Matter. 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 This could be a poem about pain, but it's not. It could be about justice, but it's not. It's not about a festival of raised arms inciting smiling bullets. It's just, it's just about bullets. Just bullets, period. Bullet lonely. Bullet needs warm flesh. That's what bullet told to do, trained to do. Holster to claustrophobic escape to a burning caress to push through skin like moving tunnels to excavate with first hello. Bullet likes foaming mouths, likes the thick ripples made when wind hits blood puddles. Bullet likes how muscle fibers massage us back on entry, but muscle tissue too boring. Bullet likes bone, likes bone better, likes to find bone, likes how the ricochet is more fun and more lethal. Bullet likes how random pain can be easily inflicted, but bullet rarely seen. Bullet runs too fast to be coveted. Bullet always covered, always covered, covered in human, in smoke, in blood, always covered, never seen, only bullet's footsteps examined. It's pathways reenacted, it's fingerprints analyzed, so bullet gets jealous. Bullet jealous, bullet jealous of how blood cells clamor in unison like family. How they hold each other close. How after bullet's gaping handshake leaks onto the concrete, they all join hands and sing hymns. Bullet wants family too, bullet wants family, bullet wants to be plural, so bullet threatens T, kills R and kidnaps S. Bullet now bullets. Bullets now swarm. Like bees, like locusts, like religion, like control, but still, Bullet wants more than control, more than religion. Bullet wants to worship, to be worshipped. Bullet needs more than family. See, family just regurgitated pain, gunpowder in a cold embrace. Bullet wants more than warm flesh, more than puncture, more than open wound. Bullet wants to be remembered. Bullet wants to aim, wants to aim high, but Bullet can't aim by itself, so it aspires to be infamous, like the American dream. Bullet wants the American dream like memories of bedtime stories with Malcolm, Martin, Oscar, Amadou, Bullet jealous again. Those bullets went Hollywood. Bullet wants to be a screenplay adapted for ghetto boys. Other bullets gone indie, wants to be a cult. Bullet wants success to be admired, wants Netflix original series. Bullet wants the red carpet, wants VIP, wants news stories, primetime coverage, wants to be interviewed by Oprah. Bullet wants a Facebook page. No, 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 better yet, Twitter. Twitter, yes, hashtag, hashtag, yes, Bullet wants its own hashtag. Hashtag best bullet ever. Hashtag dopest bullet since Christmas addicts. Hashtag dopest bullet since Lincoln, since Trayvon, since Eleanor Bumpers. Bullet needs PR, so Bullet hires an agent. Bullet learns Spanish and practices street slang abonics. Bullet studies Swahili and penal codes. Bullet gets to read for the role. Bullet kills the audition and then flown to Missouri for the first day of shooting. Bullet scared. Bullet scared. Bullet scared of lights, of action, of body cameras. But Bullet steady. Bullet focused. Bullet believes Bullet can do anything it wants to do with the right motivation, so Bullet wins. Bullet gets casted for the next Gen of Six sequels. Bullet gets used to the glitz. Bullet wins. Bullet gets nominated for the Oscar. Bullet wins. Bullet gets a home in the hills. Bullet gets famous. Bullet has fans. Bullet wins. And when asked how Bullet made it so big, Bullet responds, I was just pointed in the right direction. <laughs> Bullets win. I was walking home from work, tying a shirt, trousers and shoes. Got to the green near my house. Some young boys are kicking a football about. Full kit, replica tops, shirts, socks, astro boots. They must have been about 10. I must have been about 33. I was minding my own business, casually musing on the subtle differences between my favorite brands of crisps, Walker's Max and Real McCoy's. When one of the boys has suddenly overhit a kick, and the ball has rolled over towards me. I froze, and my heartbeat rose. Yet time seemed to slow down. Out of nowhere, suddenly I heard a crowd. Then my old football coach, big gruff cockney voice, bulging red blood vessels in the side of his neck, West Ham tattoos, pink Ralph, screaming out at the top of his voice, Paul, don't do 
learn to feed the stupid. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. I told myself, relax. Just trap it, get the ball under control, and very carefully just pass it back. But then another voice, deep inside the hidden isolation unit of my mind, suddenly jumped up and screamed out, Paul, this is your chance. You've got to take it. Show them what you can do. Show them your skills. Somewhere in between thinking about those two opposing views, I've stuck my right leg out and my right leg was confused, unsure what to do. The ball hits the outside of my black leather lace-up shoe, taking all the power out and then just meekly bobbling behind me like water drops dribbling out of a tap in a drought and just rolling into the road like my very own You've Been Framed video. I slap my forehead and just to rub salt into my wounds, I looked up to see the kids in the replica kits laughing are making rude hand gestures at me. You're rubbish, mate. Put my hands up. Sorry, boys. I just ain't got it anymore. Dear Professor Brian Cox, we love to watch you on the box. The wife and I have to confess, it's not just the science about which we obsess. That time when you explained the quark, you ignited a certain spark. Soon we were having thoughts obscene whilst you described the selfish gene. We feel it timely to profess, we'd love to meet you in the flesh. Please forgive us if we say, we'd like to share some DNA. We'll explore this urge like an electronic surge, our entanglement will be quantum. And the wife assures her celestial orbs can be yours whenever you want them. So Brian, think on, if you can, come along to our Big Bang. With sufficient frantic motion, we might find our own Higgs boson. And if our lust should make you weary, we could just discuss string theory. Now please Brian, don't be vexed, it isn't just about the sex. We view your mind with great respect. We wondered at the solar storms and the sludge where life first formed. We listened rapt as with aplomb, you explained the atom bomb. You made clear to the entire nation the principle of gravitation, the source of the rift in the continental drift, why planets circle the sun, how oceans formed, how life began, and the laws of cell mutation. Brian, we will always dote on that breathless way you explain the proton. Even if it's not to be, we can watch your DVD. You're on the television so much, we don't really have to touch. We can contemplate Uranus, hypothesize about black holes, explore that darker energy, flick with you from pole to pole. We'd have loved to see you quite content between our hypothermal vents. But if you say no, it could be worse. There's always a parallel universe. 